everybody. I invented this way of praying the rosary on the fingers that I like to use, and I thought I'd share it with you. It's a really cool way that uses both hands. The left hand is the decades hand. The right hand is the counting hand. There are five decade positions on this left hand. The first decade, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. And then on this right counting hand, you do the um, Apostles' Creed in this position, right here. The Our Father, the Three Hail Marys, one, two, three, the glory be in the oh my Jesus. And now we're ready to do the first decade. So for all that part that we just did just then, we've had our hand in this position. And this is also the same position which we'll simply keep while we do the first decade too. So this left hand is good to go. Now we're going to do the first decade by bringing the right thumb here for the first mystery and for the Our Father. And then we do 10 Hail Marys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The glory be and the oh my Jesus. And now I, I wanted to say that I'm holding my hands up. But actually, when you do this, you, you don't walk around with your hands up while you pray. I guess you could, but you want to have them comfortably uh, resting in a way that's comfortable for you. So we just finished the first decade, and now we're going to do the second decade. So we go to this position, just like that. And then on the right counting hand, we put the thumb here. And actually, this left hand changes to here at the same time that the right thumb arrives to here. So they both change and they arrive at the same time. Because you might, I might include later that actually, even though the external is changing and going through all different combinations, in the center we simply practice not leaning. We basically practice constancy in the midst of change even including the changing rosary hand positions. So we've switched this one here for, to begin the second decade, and this th thumb is here for the second mystery and for the Our Father. And now we just do 10 Hail Marys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, the glory be in the oh my Jesus. And now, in case we've forgotten where we are, we just look at this hand, the decades hand. We realize we've just done this one, that's the second one, so we know that we're on the third one. So we move this decades hand to this third decade position right here. At the same time that this right thumb arrives here for the third mystery, the Our Father, and now we'll do 10 Hail Marys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The glory be and the oh my Jesus. And sorry, my hand shakes a lot. And uh, now we'll do the fourth decade, like that. At the same time that this hand, um, the thumb arrives to here for the fourth mystery, the Our Father and the Ten Hail Marys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The glory be the O oh my Jesus. And the fifth decade is simply done in the same place as before as the first one. So. It's kind of the idea of the beginning and the uh, and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. You know, I like to think of that. It is the same place at the conclusion, and we'll keep this not only through the entire fifth decade, but through the Hail Holy Queen and the final prayer too. So it can just stay like this. And for the fifth decade, this thumb will have arrived here at the same time that this changed. 
And for the fifth mystery, the Our Father, and that now we'll do the Ten Hail Marys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The glory be in the O oh my Jesus, the Hail Holy Queen. And then the final prayer, Eternal Father, who's only begotten Son by his life, death, and resurrection. You know, that one. And... Um, one thing that I really like about this is the way that we pray it. We pray the rosary on these joint creases, right? And the way the plane of this thumb intersects this joint crease can be reminiscent of a cross, you know. It's not squared up perfectly. I guess you could force it around to try to make it more squared. <laughs> but that's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be just reminiscent of a cross. So it's better to just keep it relaxed and comfortable. And then there's this idea, remember we had the, the, begin, the beginning place, and, which is the same as the ending place. Now this place, uh, the other cool thing about this place is um, that when we do the Ten Hail Marys, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same place, right? And seven could be considered the number of completion because the number of days in creation and like that. So I think it's cool the way that all uh, that all <laughs> comes to this place. And also, when I developed this, I know there are a lot of other potential sampling points I could have used in this, but I chose this because for all the Our Fathers, they're all done on the same place, and so are all the mysteries. And also this way emphasizes the importance of holding to the center. Uh, so you know, in in Christianity, there's that um, there's that verse that says, "Where two or, or more are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them." Uh, and so that is commonly done by having two or more believers gather, and then God's presence is in the midst of them. Sometimes that, that might involve waiting around so you can get the two or more believers together. <laughs> You think you have two, but maybe one of them isn't believing that much, you know. <laughs> that might throw it off or something. I don't know. I'm just just guessing. But what I'm what I wanted to say is there's a way to use the frame of the human body in worship. That makes sense, doesn't it? So this is a way that instead of gathering two or more believers, you gather two or more points. Uh, and having gathered these sampling of points on one side of the body and on the other. The practice is simply to pray the rosary without leaning in any direction. When you think of it, there's this place between right and left, right? I mean, how straight and how narrow is this place between right and left? And um, and as the world presents itself to us, even if just in normal life's activities or as we're praying the rosary, we'll tend to, we will tend to lean toward what we like and maybe lean away from what we don't like, right? And when we... But this is a way to actually actively train to... Uh, to abide in the place that doesn't miss the mark. Because if you had a bullseye, for example, and you're throwing darts at it, and one dart hit off to the left side, and one hit off to the right side, and you're going for the bullseye, you would know that the bullseye is the place that doesn't miss the mark, right? And if your goal was to keep throwing the darts until you finally could hit the bullseye, man, you're going to have just efforting after efforting after efforting until you finally hit that sweet spot in the bullseye and then the words, it is finished. It's the end of all efforting, the end of all anxious toiling. And the words, it is finished in Christianity are very important, you know. So when we pray the rosary, we have a choice in how we can pray it. <clears throat> and this way of praying without leaning, it's a devotional way to do it. Because you, 
you practice abiding in the place that doesn't miss the mark. And then there's the verse that says, trust in the Lord with all of thy heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, man, in everything, acknowledge him. So this, for this example, you could say that there is this straight and narrow place. I mean, if you consider the place between right and left, that's just as straight and narrow as can be, but it could refer to the place between any of the opposites. See, this could be the equivalent of the vertical axis of a mystical cross. And similarly, there's a place that doesn't miss the mark, that for any application is just exactly right, a place that's not too much or too little, you know. Uh, not, not over and not under, but it's just exactly right. And that, it, it's possible that could represent um, the horizontal arm of a cross, you know. So, I mean, there are the words, take up your cross and follow me. And there's also this way of setting up the scale and uh, abiding in the place that, oh, it does match where your heart is. It's where your treasure and your heart is. And so there's this way of perhaps taking up your cross and following me. And... Um, so the lesson from the scriptures is um, the story of Mary and Martha where Jesus arrived and he was simply right there. When Mary saw him, she was simply right there too. And Martha, she loved Jesus, but she, she had all these things in her mind that, well, before I can do that, I've got to jump through all these hoops. <laughs> I have all these little projects and sub-projects, the cleaning, the cooking, all of this that has to be done so we can have a quality visit. This has to be done first. But Jesus was already there, man. And, and Mary, Mary kind of knew what to do, but Martha was saying, Jesus, will you please tell Mary to come over here and help me? I'm doing all this work so we can have a decent time together. And she's just sitting there like that. And Jesus said, Mary has chosen the one good thing. So it's kind of like that. Uh, it's a way of uh, doing the rosary uh, on the fingers of the hands without leaning in this devotional type of way. Um, and so that's that's one way to practice and uh, so it literally is the world around you is ever new when you think about it sure it may seem like you work in the same boring place you know day after day the same boring job the same <laughs> terrible lunches <laughs> and like that but every day <laughs> But really, from one moment to the next, life is ever new, man. Um, you have different food in you today than you had yesterday. If you breathe in, that's a different combination of air particles than you have ever breathed in before. Your hair might be a different length than it's been in the past. Even the position of the stars and planets around you, they have changed. So you may think it's just the same old boring thing, but no, man. Creation it changes around you, and it presents itself in all these ever new ways, parading up before the place that doesn't miss the mark. And with each presentation is the invitation to either choose and hold to the one good thing or to go outward into the world toiling and spinning as Martha was doing. So Mary had chosen the one good thing and Martha, Martha was just toiling away. So uh, we practice in this way, counting on the fingers and landmarks of the hands um, and through it all just sitting and abiding changelessly in the, in the midst 
of all these gathered points and samplings. And as we do, we can consider this question which Jesus asked, lovest thou me more than these? When you go out into the world anxiously seeking and toiling and spinning, it creates more unfinished business in the world, more things to do. And, uh, but if you uh, don't, if you can devotionally hold to this place that doesn't miss the mark, then you're kind of in the place, uh, like in the story of the prodigal son, where the house was still there, the father was still there to welcome back his son when he came back. And this is like all these uh, changes that parade up before you from one moment to the next. <clears throat> I like to think of them as prodigal expressions that, are upon, that upon their presentation, uh, because God dwells in the, uh, in the midst of us, you know, the kingdom of God is within. Uh, we can welcome back these prodigal expressions in a way that doesn't miss the mark. But commonly in life, the response will be to overreact or to underreact. And either way, it creates unfinished business. And we don't always know how to gauge that, how, how you can even know what kind of response is right. But you can use the human the frame of the human body in devotional worship, establish the scale, and gathering two or more points, know what is in the midst of them, and simply hold to and choose this one good thing. And this is the place that doesn't miss the mark, and what that means is that it doesn't overreact or underreact. Remember I told you that example of uh, right and left, the two opposites, that's just an example. But don't forget the example of two more opposites would be overreact or underreact. You could try to become like a psychologist and try to figure all that stuff out. You might figure it out for one thing, but in doing that one thing, you've <laughs> you neglected another thing. Man, it's beyond, it's beyond using the mind to figure out how to do it. When this world presents itself to you, you don't have to know what any of it is because accumulatively it registers in this frame of the human body as leaning. To, uh, accumulatively away from things you don't like toward things that you do like. And this if you really understand this, it's how to take no thought for the morrow because you don't have to think about or anything like that. You totally use the mind in this kind of practice, but it's not used in the traditional way of where one thought follows another, that you figure one thing out, then you figure another thing out. No, man, the mind is totally spot on, but it's spot on in stillness. It's in holding to this one good thing. And when you do that, uh, you are Johnny on the spot, and you're in the right place at the right time with certainty. And I just want to say that sometimes in life, man, you just don't know what to do. You're just uncertain. You think, man, should I stand up straighter? Should I smile more or smile less? Or what should I do? You know, all those are external techniques, external toilings and spinnings and concerns. All that can be sold for to obtain the one good thing, and then you simply don't lean. That's the that is the answer you simply don't lean and you pray, and this is and you can practice it while you are praying the rosary on these varied hand positions and while the entire world around you parades up in these new ways and from the place that doesn't miss the mark 
this kind of practice is an offering to God, an offering to creation itself. So check it out, try it, hope you like it. And man, if you wouldn't mind liking my video and maybe subscribe, and I'd appreciate it. Thank you.